claim to be the creator, but I'm a savior. And I take the strange parables of human life and make something out of the crazy quilt that saves hundreds of lives. Mm-hmm. Venom, the last dance. The last one. Yeah, right. Um, before I start with the spoilers, I'll just say that out of the three movies, this is the one that I most enjoyed. That's not to say a lot. Um, let me get into the spoilers before I start telling you how I feel about it. I'll obviously tell you how I feel as I'm telling you the story. Um, and then give you my final thoughts at the end. The movie literally starts off with Null, uh, explaining his origin and what he is. And oh my god, Sony is the fucking king of clickbaiting or luring you into theaters by showing you something in the trailer and you think it's going to be a big prominent part in the movie. And but no, what you see in the trailer is all you get. That's all you get of Null. Okay, don't go to the fucking movie if you think this is a null movie and he's gonna do badass shit. You already saw it in the trailer. That's all you're gonna see of him. Don't go to the fucking movie to see him if that's what you're wanting to see because that's all you're gonna get. Uh, basically, he, he just says that, oh, the symbiotes turned on me and they fucking made a prison for me. And uh, I'm looking for the codex, which is the key to open it. They explain later on in the movie that the way the key or the codex was created was whenever uh, Venom or Eddie Brock died in one of the last movies and Venom brought him back to life, they somehow fused. I don't know how, if they're separate, especially at the end of the movie, doesn't make any sense, but they somehow fused and that created the codex. And so now he's awakened and he can sense it. And so he opens up these portals that kind of look like the Doctor Strange portals, but not really. And he sends these cockroaches out there to go fucking get the Codex. And that's basically what's going on. That's explained to you at the very beginning of the movie. And then we're taking right back into Spider-Man No Way Home, where he's at the bar with the bartender. And the bartender's telling him about Thanos and Iron Man and all this bullshit. Um, and then he gets transported back to his shitty universe. And by the way, I have to say this because it n- never to me made any sense why Eddie Brock was even in the MCU. Because that's not how Doctor Strange's fucking uh, spell worked. It was whoever knew the identity of Peter Parker was going to be transformed or sent over there. Uh, which makes no sense because there's not even a Peter Parker in his fucking universe. Fuck you, Sony. Uh, but anyways, he's back in the shitty Sony-verse. And he gets the idea about... You know, he's a wanted guy because he's wanted for murders. But he gets the idea about going to New York because there's some kind of judge there that ruined his life. And he says, if I go and convince him, he can clear my name and and everything will be back to normal. So they're headed to New York. In the streets of Mexico, they do that scene with the dogs where he rescues the dogs and eats those bad guys. We've seen it in the trailer. By the way, you've seen a lot of the movie in the fucking trailer. A few things you haven't seen, especially the third act you haven't seen. But a lot of it you've already seen in the trailer. From then on, we find out that whenever he goes full Venom, uh, it's almost like a homing beacon goes off inside of his symbiote. And he gives off a radar and the little cockroach knows where he's at. Um, So they're flying to New York and Venom latches onto a plane. You've seen this in the trailer. And when he turns full venom on the plane, he starts beeping and uh, sending the homing beacon. And the cockroach, it's like if it has instant transmission or something. But the damn thing literally just fucking is up there all of a sudden next to them on the plane. And they start sort of fighting. But what ends up happening is that they push the cockroach through the through the the jet plane engine or whatever and it gets shredded into pieces and venom jumps off and is just gliding and shit uh we've seen some of that in some of the trailers um something that's happening on 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 the side of eddie brock's story is that the government and i don't know why sony fucking does this but they got um i can never say his name so i just call him chai this guy right here but they got this fucking actor to play uh, this general who's hunting symbiotes and then I guess they're studying them in Area 51 underneath Area 51 by the way this is a whole other plot and story and I'll get to that as well um, 
there's also this woman scientist whose brother, little brother died because lightning struck her, but they held hands. So the lightning traveled through her and killed her brother instead. Fucking weird. I don't even know who came up with this story. Fucking weird. Um, and she's also studying the symbiotes in Area 51. And her and this other uh, black chick who's also a scientist, they're kind of in love with the aliens and they want to learn and, 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 and they, they like them. They don't want to just kill them. The other guy fears them, you know, and, and he knows something's up and shit. Um, but that that's what's going on. And they also have uh, uh, Mulligan from the second movie, the detective. They have him there and they infected him with a symbiote because I think his body was dying after rejecting venom or something. So they uh, injected him with another symbiote and they talked to it. And then it that one tells them about Null and how it's coming and all these other stuff. So that freaks out the general and the general is all like, we need to find the codex and destroy it. Uh, because if we destroy it, then that thing, whatever Null is, doesn't have to come to earth and, and kill everything. And so they're after Eddie Brock to kill him, is what they, they're doing. When they're in the desert, Venom, uh, once they land off the plane, Venom, they do the whole scene. Venom tells Eddie Brock about Null, blah, blah, blah. We've seen this in the trailer, man. I'm telling you, we've seen a lot of it in the trailer. But he gets into the horse and they start running through the desert. And what ends up happening is the government catches up to them and they start attacking them. They jump in the river. We've seen this in the trailer. He turns into a fish and a frog and a bunch of other bullshit because the symbiote latches on to these animals. And Eddie Brock is fighting one of the soldiers or whatnot. Anyways, because they go full venom to try to fight these things, the cockroach suddenly appears there and starts attacking the humans. This cockroach, I got to tell you, man, the special effects on it probably look really good. Uh, again, I'm watching a pirated version. I don't pay for ass. Never pay for ass. Not when you can get it for free. Uh, don't forget that. But anyways, uh, special effects look pretty decent on this cockroach. And it's called a xenophage. I think that's from the comic books. When it eats people, it spits them out the back of its head like a wood chipper crazy idea cool looking makes no fucking sense but okay i'll i'll roll with it because it looked cool um so eddie and, and venom managed to escape and and they know that they can't go full at this point they know they can't go full venom because this thing can track them so it's just eddie brock walking around the desert and he runs into again i don't know why sony does this i, I don't know if they they, they have idiots working over there or they literally are just trying to confuse people or ruin the MCU, but they get Raya Saifan, which is the lizard from their amazing Spider-Man movie to fucking be some kind of deadbeat hippie dad. It's a family. They're in the desert. Their kids are with them. They're obviously homeless and they live in a van and they're traveling to Area 51 because the dad is one of these UFO nuts and he wants to fucking uh, see Oh yeah, the, the thing about the UFO story with Area 51 is that the government's finally closing it down and they're going to open it to the public. But the secret is that they have the base underground so they don't give a shit what happens above. Um, so that's that's really a, a subplot, another subplot in the movie, right? Anyway, so they're headed there and so that's why you see him in the van singing with them and, sh and they're singing the ground control to Major Tom. They're singing that shit. The whole family, too. It's, it's actually pretty badass. And Venom starts singing along with him. I hate Venom's voice. I've always hated Venom's voice. Fuck you, Tom Hardy, and your stupid, dumb voices that you make for every fucking movie. Dumb as fuck. Um, they get dropped off in Las Vegas. They steal some guy's fucking suit, which we've seen in the trailers. They meet Mrs. Chan. And I don't understand why. Because at this point in the movie, they both know this, including Venom. That if you transform into Venom, you're a homing beacon and that thing's gonna automatically find you guys. But he transforms into Venom and starts dancing with this Asian lady. And you get a whole little scene of them dancing around and shit. Before the fucking thing jumps through the window because hello, it didn't make any sense. So they take the Venom suit off and then the thing leaves. Uh, you know, I'm lame. Like, who's writing this fucking movie is what I say. But as soon as the thing leaves, the government shows up and they capture Eddie Brock and separate him from Venom and they put Venom in a tube so that the scientists can study him. Eddie Brock in there in Area 51 sees Mulligan and Mulligan transforms and tells him that, hey, you need to free, you need to get Venom back and then you need to free us 
because all the symb you have a symbiote army here and we can help you if you let us out so what ends up happening is one of these scientist girls i guess because she loves these things and the government's going to shut everything down and destroy everything because they don't want null coming they free venom and she latches like gets venom in her she doesn't let anyone know and i think this happens off screen because this comes out of nowhere but when she gets close to eddie she goes like that and venom latches onto eddie and he transforms and then he starts fighting the government guys but of course because now he's venom the damn cockroach shows up and now everybody's fighting the cockroach uh then from here it actually gets good because they actually finally let go of all the symbiotes they free them and they start latching on to anyone they can find and then they start fighting uh this cockroach thing a lot of them die the cockroach eats them and shit but you see them you know transform and do all this crazy stuff it's a lot of cgi bullshit obviously but i liked it that's when a movie really starts getting badass there's a lot of fighting but these this cockroach thing regenerates no matter if they kill it it just re you know it rebuilds itself and then it starts attacking again so it's almost impossible to, to win and the whole time they're just telling venom to run run and the symbiotes are trying to protect him and the soldiers they kill one of the symbiotes and one of the symbiotes is all like we're helping you we're the good guys and i was all like fuck you sony didn't you say in the first movie that these things were coming here to invade and take over the population of earth how are they good guys all of a sudden just because now they're being hunted i mean if you were going to introduce null in the stupid subplot this should have been from the very fucking beginning of the first movie because now it just makes no fucking sense that you're just oh they're good guys this whole time fuck you the family finally sees the you know the hippie family they finally see the fucking aliens and shit and, and they have a part in it and help eddie brock or whatever uh but at the very end what ends up happening is Noel now knows that they're getting close to getting the codex so he sends opens more portals and sends a bunch of these fucking things to hunt you know and finish them off and and venom knows that this is the end so it decides to sacrifice itself and it latches on to all the roaches and becomes this giant blob of disgustingness and it spits eddie out and then it grabs my boy chai and he makes him push the button that turns on all this acid and it drops on it and starts killing it and killing the this is what i don't understand because if those things can regenerate that thing the acid would have killed venom and then killed those things but then they would have regenerated but whatever they all die and it clearly shows at that moment that Noel gets trapped that his his cage closes up indefinitely and he's trapped and he doesn't have the codex venom is dead uh eddie passes out the next day or three weeks from now whenever the fuck because they don't say but whenever eddie wakes up he's in the fucking hospital now and there's this fucking general and shit and the general is telling him the country thanks you for your service and all the good stuff you've done and we're gonna pardon you you just can't ever talk about any of this ever again or we'll lock you up and he's all like yeah yeah i get it whatever the fuck so then at the very end we see eddie going to new york and living there walking down the streets happy and he's having just memories of venom and shit and that's basically how it fucking ends uh so yeah venom the symbiote died apparently according to this movie um the mid credit scene it's Noel. he's holding his sword and he's saying he's free he's saying i'm finally free and i'm gonna go and destroy all the planets and i'm gonna destroy everyone you love and i'm gonna make you watch who the fuck is he talking to i don't know how the fuck is he free if venom and the codex were destroyed i don't know Sony, you don't even follow your own fucking story because it makes no fucking sense. Oh my god. And then the end credit scene. Oh yeah. The bartender at the, the, the when the when they introduced the government in the beginning of the movie, my bad. This wasn't important, which is why I didn't fucking message, mention it. When they introduce the the government, they actually go to the bar where Eddie was and they run into the guy, the bartender. And the guy knows too much, so they fucking zap him and they take him with with them to Area 51 as a fucking captive to question him. So at the end of the movie, he comes out of Area 51 and everything's destroyed. And he's just like, hello, hello. And that's the end of that shit. Oh my god. What can I say? After three fucking movies of a Venom franchise, 
we still get no mention of Peter Parker or Spider-Man. We're nowhere closer to Peter Parker or Spider-Man being introduced. He's not even in the MCU. This movie makes no sense, ties into nothing, and all is just forced into it, basically. I, I feel like he was literally last minute and they just shoehorned him in to try to get people because they knew the movie was going to suck and no one was going to like it. So they threw Null in there and shit. Um, that's just what I feel. I feel maybe the Xenophage was already in there, but they threw in Null at the very end. You know, maybe the last few months they threw him in there. Um, I don't know. My Time to Shine has been saying that Sony has awful plans for fucking Null. And with their track record, I believe it. If this isn't going to be part of the MCU, it's going to suck. Uh, I hope it's not part of the MCU because it's already sucking. So we don't need to take the suckiness into the MCU. Um, no Spider-Man, no Venom. We were gypped for years for this for this character, for this franchise. We never even got to see Venom with his iconic fucking white spider on his chest. Because he has to meet Spider-Man for that shit to happen. Oh my god. It's just so much that was expected from a character like this. And then Sony just shat all over it. Amy Pascal, Amy Averitt, and everybody over there needs to fucking get fired. Tom Hardy doesn't need to be Venom anymore. The MCU, um, I don't know what they're going to do with Spider-Man 4. I'm now scared. I'm scared because if it's not going to be a fucking ground level movie and it's going to include all this other multiversal null shit, it's going to suck ass because Sony already doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, I don't know. What do I rate it? This one's hard, man. I, I, I'll give it like a six or a seven, believe it or not. Maybe even a, a hard eight, but nothing harder because I'll tell you that because mm -hmm. it's enjoyable. The movie has a action in it. It's enjoyable. The jokes are cheesy and corny still. Uh, so I'll just say that it's the better of the three movies. And I think that if you enjoyed the first two, you're really going to like this one because this is the better one. And that sucks because Carnage was amazing. And, and then they just ruined it in that fucking movie. Carnage is also an amazing character. Um, oh! Uh, out of nowhere, I also forgot because there, there's tons of symbiotes. That doctor that gets shocked that they died. Cause I, I was wondering why was that even in the movie? If this little girl gets struck by lightning and dies, it's because at the end of the movie when she transformed into a fucking symbiote, the symbiote has lightning powers and like the flash and can run really fast and has lightning. I don't know why. I don't think Sony knows why either. Toys and Fortnite. That's why they did it. Anyways, that's it, man, for this fucking movie review spoiler. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I'll keep you guys up to date as far as the channel goes. Uh, it's going to be a very long time. Sorry. I'm doing this out on my phone on a shitty computer. You know how that is. Uh, but y'all take care. You know, don't let life bring you down because there's going to be more shitty days than there are going to be good. Just, just the facts of life. So when you do have a good day, try to enjoy it. Peace.